Netanyahu. I'm so thrilled to be here tonight with you at the invitation of the Consulate General of Israel in New York, here to learn more about groundbreaking Israeli documentary, Memories of the Eichmann Trial. Join me. Tonight is meaningful for many reasons, but I'd like to mention uh, three specific reasons. The first is, and all of them, by the way, have something to do with the development of the Zionist movement that just came from, uh, uh, I gave a talk at the UN to a bunch of ambassadors from Africa that wanted to hear um, me talk about the way we understand Zionism. And I told them that what happened to the concept, the narrative of Zionism over the years is very tragic because it was reduced for all sorts of reasons from a wide, inspiring, optimistic discussion about the um, national movement of the Jewish people to a discussion that basically focuses on the hardships and the, of, of the, the, uh, on the geopolitics of the Middle East. And when you look at the history of the Zionist movement and the story of how the Jewish people built, little by little, a new life from the ashes of the Holocaust to the resurrection of modern Israel, little by little, there were several turning points. Very few as important as, and as influential as the Eichmann trial. Why? Because the Eichmann trial served as a, up until that point, 1961, uh, there was a hidden clash between the story of what actually happened to the survivors post-Holocaust, what happened to them during the Holocaust, and the narrative that the Zionist movement tried to convey. While the Zionist movement was adamant about telling the story of the new Jew, and if you had the chance to see the documentary, The Children of the Sun, talks about, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the work of Bruno Bettelheim, who came to examine the children of the kibbutz and came to the conclusion that this is the new breed. These are the children of the sun. And, um, and there was a clear clash up until that point. It was the first time it became legitimate for survivors to share their story. They were not looked down anymore by the sabras, by those who came to build the new Jew. And of course, there were many other reasons why the Eichmann trial uh, was important. But for that particular discussion, because it has a lot to do with the fact that this movie was produced in 1971 by David Perlov. David Perlov, in many ways, had a lot in common in fact, the role that he played in his own little way is very similar to the role the Eichmann trial played in the psyche of the Israeli collective. In what way? David Perlov came to Israel, was my teacher, and I became familiar with Yael and her twin sister Naomi through her father's groundbreaking work called Yoman, because both of them are in the movie, especially her sister. And um, I studied with David Perlov from 84 to 87, I took just about every course he had to offer. And what I learned from him is invaluable. Uh, David Perlov was in constant clash with the Israeli establishment. He was being accused of being too lyrical in his filmmaking. And you have to understand, we had at that point only one TV channel. It was a state-run channel. Only one radio station was a state-run radio station. All the filmmaking industry was very small, was tightly controlled by the government. And if you tried to bring in any artistic expression, and again, he was accused of getting art into the films. It was too artistic for that, you know, kind of, of, of mentality. And in many ways, his courage gave rise to a whole new generation of filmmakers that are more personal, are not afraid to make an artistic statement. And of course, he was a trailblazer. So in many ways, again, the fact that he chose in 1979 to do this movie um, is, um, makes sense, perfect sense to me, as someone who knew him. Uh, because it was that, that kind of story that he wanted to tackle. And, and you should know about David Perlov is not only one of the most important 
filmmakers that we had, uh, winning the Israel Prize in 1999, I believe. Mm -hmm. But he's also considered to be, until this very day, one of the most famous documentarians in the whole world, especially his work Diary, which was shown here three years ago um, in Queens uh, with the presence of his wife, Yael's mother. Um, and the third reason why this evening is so important also to me and should be important to all of you, and this is the reason why we also gathered, I believe it was yesterday, to uh, look at the amazing work that uh, Vanessa and Tomer were able to accomplish, is the question of restoration. <clears throat> and, you know, we all talk about history, we all want to learn more about what happened, whether it's uh, what happened to, uh, during the Holocaust or what happened during the early days of the State of Israel. And in this case, you will also see some of the rare footage that was salvaged by Yael and, uh, um, uh, and her team. Um, rare, can I say, Ben-Gurion? Rare footage that was never seen before, six hours of an intense interview with David Ben-Gurion in 1968. I had a chance to see only few minutes, you'll see tonight also a few minutes of this interview, it's just unbelievable. And just to think that if not for their courage, if not for their persistence, we all would have never had this opportunity to learn about this. This is a rare movie, it was produced in 1979, was never shown. They saved that movie from extinction. It's unbelievable. So, um, and same thing Vanessa did with, with uh, the Himmler archives. And thanks to her work, we now know um, more about the inner world of, of Himmler's family, himself, the entire Nazi party. Uh, it's quite amazing. So, for all those reasons, I'm so happy that you're here to be part of this very, very special intellectual salon. And without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Yael Perlov. Please, the floor is yours. Good evening, uh, everybody, and thank you for coming. I would like to start by thanking the Consul General of Israel, Ambassador Ido Aroni. I really thank you very much for that evening, for this evening, and the staff of the Israeli Embassy in New York. I would like also to thank Mr. Avner Shalev, Chairman of Yad Vashem, and uh, Mrs. Liad Ben Khabib, Director of Yad Vashem Visual Center, for their participation in this uh, very interesting project, as I see it. I would like to present, in short, the biography of my father. Are you ready, Aviv? Okay. My father, David Perlov, was born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in 1929. He studied and worked for six years in Paris, and he arrived in Israel in 1958. Very soon, he began working on short documentaries for the Israeli Film Service and the Jewish Agency Film magazines. The most important film in that early period was in Jerusalem, was done in 1963, which according to the critics, became, as, and I quote, a milestone in Israeli documentary filmmaking for its innovative and free approach, both in its form and its approach to the subject. The critics in Israel also, in Israel also see my father as the first Israeli filmmaker to relate to cinema as an art, since at that time, contrary to other art, cinema was seen as propaganda whose main purpose was to depict the heroic efforts of the population in overcoming the difficulties of building a new homeland. My father was the first to introduce the individual outlook. And the people he showed were not only heroes, but human beings. In, 1917, in 1979, 17 years after the Eichmann trial, Israel Broadcasting Authorities Channel 1 asked my father to return to the subject within the new perspective of time. Perlov chose to examine the trial through the memories of people who had testified in it, those who had been young adolescents and at that time, and he created two new heroes. The, the photographer of Lodge, who documented in hidden camera 
what was going on. And of course, Rafi and Tan, who had captured Eichmann in Argentina. Let me show you two minutes only of the photographer. אני מבין שהסתכלת על הצדדים לראות אם אין גרמנים. אין קודם. היא היה על זה, היא הסתכל. או אין גרמנים ומשהו. וגם, כן. So this is uh, Henrik Ross. Perlov chose, chose to use the simplest, most direct cinematic method. The interviews were done with the same lightning in our house in Tel Aviv. This setting, natural and comfortable, allowed the viewers, perhaps for the first time, to see children of Holocaust survivors, most of them native-born Israelis, express themselves in front of the camera openly and painfully about the subject that that was that was for so many years taboo in Israel society this is one of the essential characteristics of the film memories of the Eichmann trial was broadcast only once on Israel television in 1979 after that the film was locked in the Israeli television archive for 32 years without anyone knowing that it existed. To mark 50 years since the Ashman trial, I approached the head of the visual center of, at Yad Vashem, Liad Ben Khabib, to produce a restoration of the film. The film which was shot, a, a little bit technical issues, but it will be, I promise you, very shortly. The film which was shot in 16 millimeters was totally yellow and the master was both positive and negative, which made it extremely fragile. With this material, we arrived to the Elteset laboratory in Paris since there were no film labs in Israel since the middle of the 1980s, since the 80s. We completed its restoration in 2011, and the film today is accessible to the public and had been screened at many different venues in Israel and around the world. I always recall how anxious my father was about the negatives and the copies of his films. Forever, I remember my father's films were moved from attic to attic every time our family moved to a new apartment. That's why I'm giving such an importance to the work of preservation, and I would like to take this opportunity and present our next project with my colleague, director and producer, Yariv Moser. Together we started restorating a, film fic a fiction film of my father that nobody saw called 426, which was completely forgotten about the life story of the Vid Ben Gurion. I heard about it really twice in my life. Thank you, Yael. I had the privilege of uh, studying at the film school uh, at uh, the Tel Aviv University. And um, I had the privilege of studying with David Perlov and with Yael Perlov, who was my teacher. And uh, since I finished my studies, we're working together. And um, I was always passionate about the films of David Perlov, and I heard something about a film that he did about David Ben-Gurion, 42.6. The film was completely forgotten, and there is no available copy uh, in Israel. So we went to the Hebrew Archive University where we knew that there is one copy left in a very bad situation. And next to it, the head of the archive is saying, you know, we have a pile of 35 millimeter reels written on it, outtakes or rushes connected to the, to the Ben-Gurion film. So we were placing those um, images on the very old editing system and we see Ben-Gurion um, being interviewed for hours, hours of inter six hours of interview to be precise, which we discovered later that the interview was, was done as preparation and research for the script of the fiction film that Perlov did two years later. The British film producer who initiated this uh, fiction film wanted to be accurate to the life of David Ben-Gurion and this is why he initiated the interview. So we found the reels, but the reels were, were without sound, mute. 
and the head of the archive didn't know where is the sound. And this started a whole new research of, of tracking down the sound. Later on, and I'll make it short, we discovered at the Sdeboker in the Negev, at the house of David Ben-Gurion, at the archive that he left, we discovered another pa uh, um, uh, pile of small reels of sound, which uh, the owner of the archives, the head of the archive said, it, it is not connected to what you're looking for. This is something that we got from a, from a Jewish guy from London who came here. I'm telling you, it's not connected. It's a radio. So, yeah, it's, it's radio. radio. It's, it's radio. sound. It's not connected to any film, to be, of course not to any interview. So I called this uh, um, sound person. And he answered the phone, and he said, uh, Mr. Malcolm Stewart, a very legendary sound person who worked with Kubrick, who did the sound for uh, the bridge over the Kwai River. And he's answering the phone, and he's saying, you know, I'm 85 years old. I should have been dead by now. <laughs> and, and he said, uh, yes, this, those reels are connected to a filmed interview but I have no clue where is the interview because I lost contact with, the, with this British film producer back in the, 70, in the, in the 60s. It's, the interview was done in 1968, five years before Ben-Gurion died. He's 82 years old. And um, we, Yael and I, synced the material and suddenly we have this significant interview. Ben-Gurion is excluded from the political arena of Israel. He's far away in his home in the desert. He's, um, this gives him the opportunity to speak freely about his role in the Zionist movement, in the establishment, in the remaking, the way he says, has said it, uh, the remaking of the Jewish state. He speaks critically also about his role. He speaks about the present, and this is one year after the Six Day War. And he also predicts the future. He says remarkable things about Israel and about the world. He predicts there that Europe will get united. He predicts there that United States and Russia will end the Cold War and then they will need to face China and India as the new big empires in the world. This is all been in this interview and this gave us um, the idea to do a new documentary film which will emphasize on the last uh, period of life in the life of this great leader who changed the face of modern history. I'm here with Yariv Moser, Israeli filmmaker. Yariv, um, you just shared with us this really exciting news that you've discovered six hours of footage, unseen footage, uh, interviews with Prime Minister Ben-Gurion. What do you think is going to be the most exciting uh, piece of this footage that, that audiences are going to find out? Oh my God, it's um, it's hard to tell because it's such a big interview with uh, David Ben-Gurion talking about so many um, subject matters, uh, about the past, about the present, predicting the future. So um, I think everyone will find something else and I, I don't want to particularly, uh, you know, choose one. Okay, Arif, good answer. Thank so you. how about you tell us what you so far have found to be the most profound piece of this? Oh my God. There is one thing that really captured me when Ben-Gurion says, um, war is not a sign of strength. Peace is. And I think that this is something very significant for me, you know, in, in times that we hear so much about wars and wars going on, that people could think that war is the target or war is the solution, while war is not the solution. Peace is the solution and the thing that we need to, you know, um, this is our goal. And Ben-Gurion was preaching about it and uh, I hope that this film will make a change or uh, show our leaders nowadays that this is the thing that we need to aim for. David Ben-Gurion was in Israel at a, a very, I mean, uh, interesting and, and important moment in Israel's history. What do you think people in our generation are going to discover about that time period that we don't know until now, having not seen these kinds of interviews? I think that young generation, as myself, are keen to hear um, the vision of the, you know, the founder of Israel, the guy who, the guy, the the leader that invented this whole thing. You know, he had the perception of what Israel 
should be and should become. And this is why I'm doing this film. I have the passion that for me as a person, but also for my generation, to go back and hear him. And maybe he has answers for questions that we have today. So this is what I think this film will do. What kind of questions uh, do you think that, that his, his interview will address? What are the questions of today that, that you think Ben-Gurion addresses from yesterday? Well, um, what is the role of the State of Israel? What uh, should we become? What is the um, society should look like? Uh, what is the role of the Jewish people uh, among all other nations? Um, what is Zionism nowadays? You know, in this interview, David Ben-Gurion is saying, is saying, if you'd ask me 30 years ago, and this was 1968, if you would ask me 30 years ago if I'm Zionist, I would say, of course, but nowadays, I'm not sure that my answer will be yes, because people that are considering themselves Zionists I don't know what does it mean for them. So this is a very powerful uh, thing that he's saying in this interview. Yeah, indeed. I think that's a really profound statement of how do you define Zionism. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Ben-Gurion's character and, you know, are there, are there pieces of Ben-Gurion that we had not seen before that we're seeing for the first time in this footage? And I know this is a late Ben-Gurion, right? This is the later, in ten, in the, the last 10 years of his life. So who is David Ben-Gurion at this stage in his life? I think that David Ben-Gurion, and this is something that the experts about David Ben-Gurion, they all agree upon. David Ben-Gurion was always, especially at, at the end of his life, but always a very anxious person. He didn't want to, you know, to have a relief to say, that's it, we're in we have a state, everything is fit. No, he was an anxious and he was always saying, don't, uh, Israel doesn't exist. We do not have a state yet. We still have a lot of work to do. And this is the thing that is so present in this interview and I want to show to people uh, also today. Okay, well, I think I'm anxious and our audience is anxious to see this film. So tell us when, when your film's coming out. Um, to be optimistic, mid-2015, maybe towards the end, will be uh, um, the approximate time that the film will be released. Okay, and I hope you're going to do a big rollout in the United States and on JBS. Thank you so much for joining us tonight Thank on you. JBS. Thank you for this. Thank you very much. I'm here with Yael Perlov an Israeli documentary producer and daughter of the famed David Perlov, uh, one of Israel's most foremost documentary filmmakers and winner of the Israel Prize. Yael, we're here this evening to um, learn more about your father's uh, famous documentary regarding the Eichmann trial. Um, what about the film do you find to be the most moving uh, piece of it? Firstly, uh, good evening. Um, uh, the film was done 17 years after the trial and my father was asked to film the new generation, those uh, sabras uh, who didn't uh, speak about their parents, who didn't speak about the subject. This was the main issue of this film. While shooting the film, my father discovered ma two main characters. One is the, the fantastic photographer from Lodge, uh, Henrik Ross, and the second one is, of course, the one who caught Achman, Rafi Eitan. So, uh, to interview both of them is really the main, the main, mo the main moving uh, moments, the, the important moment, moments of the film. Of course, there are some uh, interviews that shows how the second generation, as I was, uh, caught and and uh, listened to the to the trial. Uh, they listen it only by radio. And suddenly the whole, uh, the whole, I can say even the whole life changed after this trial. So this is the main issues about the film. Yeah. Yeah, El, um, every, everybody who has discussed the Eichmann trial, I think, talks very much about the transformation of Israeli society following the trial. Can you tell us a little bit about what exactly did take place in Israeli society and how this film captures that transformation? Well, 
I just know from the firm that uh, till the Eichmann trial, it was a taboo. We couldn't speak about it. We couldn't talk about it. We didn't want to talk about it. You know, uh, there is a famous uh, sentence of Golda Meir. I remember that very well. The Sabras, they will be born without complex. You know, they just came out from the sea. That was the real dream for us as a Sabra myself. And I think after learning about the Holocaust, something, uh, it was something else that we had to, to understand. It came on time and we had to learn it. And from that point, uh, there was suddenly history because there was not only future, but also history, return to our parents, return to our grandmother. Until today, you can find all around us people who just uh, eager really to go back to Poland, to go back to Europe, to, to try to, to, to understand what, what is my past and what is the past of my fathers, that's it. And moreover, I just can tell you that my father didn't pass the Holocaust. So from his point of view, it was also just learning about it. And that's, I found very, that, that topic I found very interesting in the film. One of the things that came out uh, in the Eichmann trial itself was um, the systematic uh, way that the Germans were killing Jews in the Holocaust. Um, today, in 2014, it's something that we all know for a fact, but the trial brought that out. What, what, are, what are the things that the viewer learns from watching this documentary? Um, is, you know, how do we get enlightened uh, after we've seen this film? You know, uh, uh, we showed a film uh, yesterday at the MoMA, okay, and there were some students of mine because I teach cinema, and it's really the new generation, I mean, and they really moved firstly from the archive of the trial itself, which is not that known, I mean, they saw some pictures, we know all these portraits, enclosing this window chair, you know, but really the process itself, it was quite new. So I think that to, to pass through it, and to, again, to reveal all that history that we didn't know and it was a taboo to talk even about, this is extremely important. That's yeah, El, you just referenced uh, the film being screened at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that because that's, it's one of the foremost cultural institutions of the United States. Yeah. And I, I think as a Jew, it, it's quite exciting that your film was screened there. Tell us a little bit. So it was really extremely exciting since um, I suddenly got an email telling we are interested in showing one of your father's film, and I was I was really amazed by that because, uh, you know, it uh, in Israel it was it was shown only once. It means 32 years. It was just it was just closed in the it was just in the archive and nobody saw this film. Uh, the film was under the framework of preservation, so. Uh, the work of preservation I initiated together with Yad Vashem and uh, now I have the fruits from that and I'm very happy that everybody can see it but for years and for years nobody saw this film so I found it extremely important to look at it again. And that's our coverage of this very special salon hosted by the Consul General of Israel in New York, Ambassador Ido Aharoni. Thank you so much for joining us on JVS.